On the island of Newfoundland Upon the Selwyn's coast Lies the little town of Virgil To whom all things is told There are so many islands That lie just off her shore And when the cold north wind blows You can hear the billows roar The people from the village Make their living from the sea They like their independence It shows that they are free Some fish in their small boats In the wind They've known their share of tragedy down through the years. And when the memory is overcome, they show their grief with tears. For they have lost some loved ones to the furies of the sea. For heartaches and heartbreaks. Are locked in memory. This village, it's got beauty, curved on its rugged shore. Seven miles of pure white sand. Who could ask for more? The mountains and the valleys were the rivers run so fast and the salmon rise to the sportsman's fly as he makes another cast Now the people of this village love their native home for anyone who goes away oh surely Rugged bellies burn so deeply in your soul. Good evening and welcome to this week in review. Tonight in our stories we have Earth Day, 30 Hour Famine, Girl Guides Kool Aid for Miracles, Student Appreciation Week, Town Council Report. Please stay tuned for these stories and more after this. Check has the Heart and Stroke Foundation's dietitians behind it. Check for Health Check, helping you make healthy choices. Earth Day was on Tuesday, April 22nd, but the Virgil Heritage and Museum Committee held an open house at the Virgil Museum in recognition of Earth Day on Saturday. There was information pamphlets and items which tickets were drawn on. That beautiful afghan and hello. Hey, museum by Hope Ingram, so thank you very much to Hope. Some of the children took part in activities that promoted Earth Day. The 30-hour famine was held at Burgio Academy last weekend. 
a total of $1,068.30 was raised. I caught up with them just as everyone was getting up. Pizza was served to them for lunch as the famine got over. The Girl Guides El Coule for Miracles on Saturday. Two stands were set up where the girls served Coulets to all those who made a monetary donation. A total of $225 was collected and given to the Janeway. Last week was Student Appreciation Week for the students of Virgil Academy. The week started with breakfast being served to all students by the teachers and staff. Thank you. 
through the week was a different theme for Spirit Day. On Friday, a spaghetti lunch was served in the parish hall. screen for dessert. This was served by the snack program volunteers. <laughs> After lunch, there was an assembly where awards were passed out. And this year, the drama club went to uh, Cockroach Valley and uh, in regionals. Unfortunately, they didn't win, but uh, if anyone was out the Wednesday night, uh, I guess like two weeks ago, when they put off their play, um, I think we all seen what a fabulous job that they did. And certainly a big congratulations to them. So the certificates. Oh, sorry. Reggie Murphy, and we'll clap it again. Jennifer Drake, Nikki Porter, Alicia Hand, Cody Randall, Olivia Anderson, Brittany Willard. Dominic Ingram, Rochelle Dominic, Vanessa Ann, Daniel Strickland, and Sarah Durford. Now, while they did not win, there was two awards that the Drama Club did win, and they won the award for Best Sound, as well as the award for the Best Costume. And again, we'll keep those, and I'm sure we'll display them somewhere in the school. So again, a big congratulations to the Drama Club. Entertainment provided by Mrs. Penny. We got
3 class. Once upon a time, there were three bears that lived in a house in the woods. Papa Bear was a great big bear. Mama Bear was a middle-sized bear. And Baby Bear was a wee little bear. Each of them had their own porridge bowl. Papa Bear had a great big bowl. Mama Bear had a middle-sized bowl. And Baby Bear had a wee little bowl. And they each had a chair to sit on. Papa Bear had a great big chair. Mama Bear had a middle-sized chair. And Baby Bear had a wee little chair. Each bear had a bed to sleep in, too. Papa Bear had a great big bed. Mama Bear had a middle-sized bed. And Baby Bear had a wee little bed. One morning, the three bears cooked some porridge for breakfast. While it was cooling, they went for a walk in the woods in search of sweet honey. After they left, a little girl named Goldilocks passed by their house. She knocked on the door. When no one answered, she went right in. This was not good manners. Goldilocks was rather hungry, so she decided to eat some of the porridge. It smelled so good. First she tasted porridge from Papa Bear's great big bowl, but it was too hot for her. Then she tasted porridge from Mama Bear's middle-sized bowl, but it was too cold for her. And then she tasted porridge from Baby Bear's wee little bowl. It was just right. So she ate it all up. Goldilocks felt tired. So she sat down in Papa Bear's great big chair. But it was too hard for her. Then she sat down in Mama Bear's middle-sized chair, but it was too soft for her. And then she sat down in Baby Bear's wee little chair. It was just right for her, but it broke. Then Goldilocks went upstairs to the three bears. First she went down on Papa Bear's great big bed, but it was too hard for her. Then she went down in Mama Bear's middle-sized bed, but it was too soft for her. And then she lay down on Baby Bear's wee little bed. It, it was just right. So she pulled up the covers and went fast asleep. Soon after the three bears came home, they noticed at once that something was wrong. Somebody had been eating my porridge to Papa Bear in his great big voice. Somebody had been eating my porridge to Mama Bear in her middle sized voice. And somebody had been eating my porridge and is eating it all up to my baby bear in his squeaky little voice. The three bears knew somebody was in their house. Somebody has been sitting in my chair to Papa Bear in his great big voice. Someone has been sitting in my chair to Mama Bear in her middle sized voice. And someone has been sitting in my chair and has broken it, cried Baby Bear in his squeaky little voice. The three bears hurried upstairs to their bedroom. Someone has been laying in my bed, said Papa Bear. Somebody has been laying in my bed, said Mama Bear. And somebody has been lying in my bed, and there she is, cried Baby Bear. Goldilocks woke up. When she saw the three bears, she jumped out of bed, raced down the stairs, and ran at the front door. Goldilocks ran as fast as she could through the woods. The three bears called for her to come back, but Goldilocks ran and ran. Three bears never saw her again. And several teachers.
Then there was an obstacle race with teachers against the students. The teachers won. the assembly, the cookbooks were passed out for all those who submitted a recipe. Mayor George Reed stopped by the studio with his town council report. All right. Okay, yeah, she's going, yeah. Uh, ready? Good evening. Uh, council had a meeting on uh, April the 24th. We had a meeting with the engineers uh, for um, the new water treatment system uh, for Virgil. The engineers came out and they, uh, they took about an hour and a half and they uh, went through the old um, uh, all of the uh, new project that's uh, that's uh, going to be done. They uh, walked us through it. Of course, we're uh, we're all a little bit more informed, but uh, as you can uh, appreciate, uh, that stuff is very very difficult to uh, to comprehend, even in uh, even in a session like that. I suppose the the real technical part of it we don't have to be uh, have to be up on, but generally we we understand now how uh, it's going to be uh, uh, started and and followed through. It it is our understanding from the engineer last night that it probably within another two weeks the uh, tenders will probably be called on it. And then probably be the end of May uh, before these tenders. They're going to, I think it's going to be a three-week tender call. So I guess most likely it's going to be in the May or early June before uh, the tender gets lit. 
they're uh, they're going they're lagging a bit behind according to the schedule that I told uh, everyone there uh, last year uh, oh, we're behind a couple months there's nothing that uh, we as, as counselors can do about it uh, this is totally within the engineer and the uh, and the municipal the uh, Department of uh, Services. Uh, these people are, are running the show. Uh, we're not putting any pressure on. Uh, I think they, they told us uh, that was one of the problems uh, with our last uh, system when we had is that uh, too much political pressure was put on. And uh, again, the uh, council doesn't, doesn't uh, the council, the, the past council doesn't even really understand where that comment came from. So this time we're not putting any uh, pressure on except to say give us a time limit and, and uh, timeline and, uh, and follow it. Now what they tell us is that uh, once it gets closed then that uh, tender gets closed they, they then have to uh, order the equipment and it's going to take a while probably two or three months uh, before the equipment arrives, so even when the tender is called and it's lit, then we might not see any work going on at the, at the building up there because they'll be waiting for equipment to come in. And then once they get the equipment to come in, then they'll come in and stay on the job and, and uh, renovate the building to the degree they have to renovate it, inside renovation, and then they'll install the new equipment. They tell us that it It'll take approximately 290 days to do the job. Uh, out of these 200 and, uh, 220 days, I'm sorry, to do the to do the job, and out of these 200, including that 220, is 90 days uh, of operation. Uh, they have to they have to operate the system for 90 days before it gets passed over to the town. There's uh, there's still one. One little wrinkle, I guess, uh, in this uh, one little thing that might might delay uh, uh, won't delay this first phase of the water uh, project, but it might delay the the overall getting it finished and getting it running, and and that is that the tank, the supply tank the storage tank for the water that they're going to install, which is the second phase, but it has to be completed basically at the same time that the first phase is completed. So therefore, the government, hopefully when the budget comes down in May or April, whenever the government brings down their new budget, hopefully in that budget, we're expecting it to be there. We've been we've been pretty much uh, told it's going to be there. So hopefully the, the money will be there to do the second phase, which is to buy and install the storage tank. Now, if that's delayed by any you know, any number of months and is not hoarded, because it takes two or three months, I think, to get these tanks. We've been told to get these tanks uh, in once they're ordered. And then, of course, they got to be erected, and they won't erect tanks after I think it's November. So, if the tank is not in and erected by November, then it won't get erected till the following spring, which will be May, June of 2009. So that's a very crucial piece of information. And the one uh, that we're going to have to try everything in our power to, uh, you know, to get it, uh, you know, to get it done on on time. So we'll keep you informed, and uh, I will keep you updated every every meeting of the uh, where we are in relationship to our water. We were hoping to that it would be running by by the beginning of uh, 2000 and, 
nine. Um, I just want to give you a couple, a bit of information here now that the engineers fit us last night. The town the size of Burjo, with the population that Burjo's got, should be using about 125 gallons per minute. 125 gallons per minute. That should be the average flow rate for the town the size of Burjo. Right now, as of today, our flow rate is about 550 gallons per minute. So if you do the math on that, that's four times the average flow rate that these engineers tell us that should be running through your pipes. So, hopefully, if you're running your water, I think it's the time of the year now when you should seriously look at it, to cutting it off totally or certainly reducing it. But I would, I would guess that the heavy frost is over. I don't know about frost coming out of the ground. They say that frees the pipe sometimes. But you yourself should, you know your system. And if you feel that your water is not going to freeze up now, that is, is quite good enough, please turn the stuff off. Turn it off now and, uh, and save, of course, uh, you know, on our water bill. And I'll, I'll give you a bit of more information on that. Um, well, in fact, I probably should give it to you now. Uh, some of the costs. Here's what's costing us this year, 2007. In 2007, chlorine and the lime and soda hash was $32,000. The electricity was $25,000. And the loan that we had to pay at the bank, we're paying on our water system, is $139,000. So, as you can see, that's, that's a fairly expensive, that's altogether that's $196,000. We collect from the people, you pay your monthly water fee, and the businesses, we collect then $142,800. And on the sewage where people pay their sewer system, pay their, we're collecting in 29,000. So we're collecting in 171,800. So you can see we're spending 196,000 for water system. And between the water and the sewage, we're taking in 171,800. So we got a shortfall around about 25,000. Of course, somewhere along the line, the council's uh, that shortfall of 25,000 that's made up um, by other revenue, of course. But somewhere along the line, that uh, council is going to have to have a look and try to balance that revenue with expenditure. And I guess that would have to be done in the budget for 2009. Okay, so that's the new system. The, uh, um, the case, the court case that we got ongoing uh, with the old system is still ongoing. Uh, it pretty much to me almost uh, fits into criminal itself uh, for anything to be taken so long to uh, to go to. It's not even, in, it's not, they haven't even got the discoveries done yet, which means that the, all the parties haven't got together to, uh, to make sure that, that this is what they're uh, suing each other for. We've been told by our lawyer now that they're 
nine lawyers involved in this case now. Nine lawyers. And it looks like to me everybody's going to sue everybody else. And to take this long, this is uh, just about four years that's uh, this been ongoing. Uh, it boggles the mind. And, uh, but uh, that's the court system, and uh, I don't think there's much that you or I can do about it. We went through 33 pieces of correspondence that we had to deal with. And, uh, we got the report from uh, Ray Andrews. I mentioned, I think, probably in the last uh, time I was talking to you, that uh, we employed Ray Andrews to uh, go out and look for, see if there's a quota out there to be, to be bought. Uh, Mr. Andrews uh, did his job sent back the report. The report is at the town, uh, at the town office, if anybody wanted to read it. His conclusion was that uh, at the present time, he couldn't find any, any quota to be, to be bought. Uh, he, he, dis, he did list and showed about, uh, I think it's 10, 10 situations in the past uh, 10 years where Fish has been transferred from uh, from uh, one company to another. And of course, you know, you know, you all know about the Harnell's Cove situation, where the provincial government uh, bought that for the for the plant down there. So it does happen, and we will. Uh, his recommendation that we write to uh, several of the companies that's got quotas to uh, to have it on file. That if uh, if any time in the future that uh, they're going to uh, sell a quota, then uh, we would, would like to be notified. We gave out, uh, for the past month, we gave out five billing permits for various reasons. You probably already know now that uh, a contract has been, uh, has been given to Hummers Paving, I think it is, in the corner boat to pave 6.8 kilometers of row of the Burger Road, starting from the Trans Canada and uh, coming south, they're going to pay that much. Plus, that they're going to uh, upgrade the uh, bad sections, so there'll be some improvement. And we've been also told. Uh, I inquired. Uh, I inquired with the manager on the uh, for that for that area, uh, Mr. McCarthy, Sir McCarthy. He tells us that, uh, or he told me that, hopefully that uh, the fall, when the fall comes, that probably more uh, brush clearing will be done on the Burger Road, hopefully. And that they will also be doing the uh, wharf out there where the ferries do, that, uh, where the new ferry terminal do. They'll be doing some pavement out there. Uh, Councillor Hitchcock and Deputy Mayor uh, uh, Dave McDonald and myself will be attending the joint council meeting in Port of Bass on May the 3rd. And Councillor Hitchcock and I will be attending the Municipal Symposium in Gander on May the 8th to the 10th. Uh, This year, of course, is come home year. Uh, I don't know if you'd had an opportunity to see the Sand and Sea uh, brochure they have out. A very nice brochure out. They're listing all their activities for the coming year and uh, for the come home year. Looks, uh, looks pretty professionally done, pretty well organized. So I hope you're uh, Encouraging your friends and your family to come home this year. Of course, your family don't—they don't need much encouragement to come home. I know. So, uh, so hopefully to be here now. Preparing yourself for come home year. Hopefully you're going to clean up around your uh, your premises. And of course, what leads in this is leading into this that uh, May the 
nineteenth to the first is uh, is going to be the two weeks for cleanup. I hope that everyone, and I mean everyone, you know, spring is here, and uh, hopefully that give you lots of energy. I hope everyone will get out, go around their pro their property, and look for everything that they can see that needs to go to the garbage dump. And we're having another meeting on the, I think it's the 14th of May, so I'll have more to say about clean up, uh, these clean up two weeks uh, at, on the next time I talk to you. But, uh, but we're just encouraging you to, even now, right at this particular time, to Take the energy, take the time, go out and clean up everything that you see that really doesn't belong on the ground. And um, get it ready for when these two weeks roll around or take it to the garbage dump now before these two weeks roll around, whatever you want to do. We'll take it, we'll take it uh, starting the 19th of May, but if you want to Get it clean, get it cleaned up, and get it taken to the garbage dump before that. Perfect, you know. So, but do what you got to do to 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 make your your premises uh, clean, please. Of course, this is also the time of year when uh, your taxes have to be paid up. Uh, town policy states that uh, if you're not paid by April the first. Then you're in arrears, and in arrears, uh, council has got uh, a lot of authority to uh, to try to collect your taxes. You know, shutting out water, I think, is one of them. If your taxes are not paid up, so, so try everything in your means to get that paid up, and if you can't come and put the full amount down. Come in and see the town manager to put a plan into place to pay it. I think you'll find that he's, uh, he's very good to deal with. People who have done it over the years. So you have to have it paid up in full or plan put in place to pay it by April the 1st. Of course, that's long past. So Pretty soon, I think within a week or two, you'll be getting it. I guess within a week, you'll be getting notices in the mail if you haven't got it. If you haven't got it paid, and if you haven't got no plan uh, set up with the council in order to pay it. And I may mention one other thing here too. If you come into council and set up a schedule to pay off your bill throughout that the year, in other words, if you're going to pay off your arrears and your 2008 taxes by the end of 2008, then make sure you follow through on your schedule, your plan that you set up. Some people come in and set up this plan to pay once or twice and they won't pay anymore until they get the next schedule. Well, that's not good enough. So if you don't follow through on your on your schedule that you got to set up, of course, council is going to have to take the necessary actions to try to get their money. Because, as you know, council can't not operate without getting the revenue that uh, that they're required. We also paid invoices totaling $91,300. Dogs and cats and other pits that are on the loose, you have to have control over them. So just want to bring a reminder to you. Please when you go on the playground, before you go into the, these entrances, there's three entrances, and at each entrance, 
There's supposed to be a sign there, and I think they're still there. No pets allowed. That's exactly what it means. No pets allowed. Only a couple of days ago, I looked down the playground. There were a couple of people in there, and they had their little dogs in there. Well, little dogs or big dogs, it doesn't make any difference. No pets means no pets allowed. And, then, and we will enforce that through the RCMP if, if we have to. So please, govern yourself accordingly, and uh, don't take your pits in on the playground. Summer maintenance. Council's doing up a summer maintenance program now. So if you see anything that needs to be done, that is council's responsibility, uh, then phone the office and let the town manager know about it. We're trying to get the leaks uh, fixed. I think we fixed one this past week. There are several more leaks that's uh, in town that the town's responsible. Hopefully, uh, Clayton will get these uh, done as, as soon as he can. And private sewage systems. There are a number of people on here, a number of households households in, in Brucho, I think. I think it's around 300 or 200 something that's got their own sewage systems. Now, it, the present policy of council, and I don't know when it was put into effect, but the present policy of council is that they will not take over private sewage systems. So if you got a sewage system, it's your own. If it gets blocked up, whatever happens to it, you're responsible for getting it repaired. The town, right now, like I told you, the present policy of the town will not take over the private systems. It would cost this town hundreds of thousands of dollars to take over private systems and that they would not be able to recover their money in the next 30, 40 years with the amount that's paid now, $8 per month. So please, if you got a private system, uh, that's, that's the present policy of council. You have to look after your own system. And we can't, can't make an exception and do it for this person or that person. Policy, policy, it must apply to everyone and everyone alike. I would like, to, at this time, I would, I would like to uh, uh, give a thank you to the highway crew, highway crew on uh, 480, Route 480. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, they did it. We've had a herd winner, you know, one of the uh, probably the hardest winners for the last uh, 10, 15 years. Uh, they did an excellent job this year on on Route uh, 480. Probably one of the best highways looked looked after uh, on this island. So, anytime you see any any one of these workers, uh, give them a pat on the back and and thank them for a job well done. And at the same time, of course, I would like to thank our workers, our starting, of course, with, uh, with Clayton Mead, and, uh, for uh, the excellent job uh, that they've done on the, the Burjo roads this year. It's, uh, it's not an easy job trying to keep uh, snow cleared on some of these uh, small, narrow roads. And I, th I think our workers do an exceptional job. So on, be on behalf of council and, and on behalf of people of Burjo, thank you very much. Next meeting is scheduled for May the 14th, I think. I can remember from last night to now. Have a good evening and have a good week. Good night. This concludes our programming for tonight. Thank you for watching.
くない。